Okay, greetings everyone. Uh going to do my podcast that I haven't done oh about two weeks now. So it's time to play a little catch up. It's October 25th, 2013. On a Friday, I think this may be episode four or five. I'm not really for sure. I am still getting my bearings back, just getting back off of vacation, but I would like to say welcome to everyone that watches my podcast. For those that are subscribers, I want to say thank you. For those that have just recently subscribed, I really want to say thank you also. I've had some subscribers over the past couple of weeks that have joined, so welcome. To everyone that's also part of my podcast here on YouTube that's joining my Ravelry group, I want to say thank you. And I'll be getting into this a little bit more into the podcast. I think I'm doing a charity program with my knitting group. I'm not really getting any interest into that. And that's fine because I will do it uh, regardless if I have any participation or not. I've been doing this long before Ravelry ever come about, long before podcast. I've always been doing this with my charity knitting with hats and so forth. So I was I, I threw it out there. There's really not been really no interest in it whatsoever. I'm going to leave that thread up just a little bit longer to see if anybody takes interest to that. If they do, I'll keep it up. If not, I will take it down and I'll continue to do it uh, alone and with local participation that I have here around the house and so forth. So with that being said, uh, I want to apologize for not getting the podcast done before I left going on my cruise to the Bahamas. I had some things that come up with work as well as a lot of other things that I don't want to get into on here that just did not give me the time to get it done. And I was pushed to get away to Jacksonville. So I did not get to do the drawing and get the giveaway sent out before I left because I had to go through my YouTube subscribers and my podcast subscribers and cross eliminate because you had to be a member of both to be eligible for this. And there were some that actually had their names put into the drawing twice. So I do have a winner that uh, on that, by the way, that I will be talking about a little bit later. So I am back and hopefully back into the swing of things. Uh, weekend review. I had an awesome time. Went to the Bahamas, left out of Jacksonville on the Carnival Cruise Line Fascination ship. Fascination was the name of this ship of Carnival Cruise Lines. And it's one of the smaller ships, I believe, that was in their fleet. This was my first cruise, and I loved it. Enjoyed it. Have absolutely nothing negative to say about Carnival Cruise Lines. And I would definitely cruise again on the Fascination. It was like a little over a four hour drive for me to get there to that destination but we cruised for like a day and a half on open seas went to half moon k bahamas awesome beautiful the sands i wish i had some of that sand here actually that i brought back and showed you crystal white the beaches were beautiful. The water was very clear. There were some jellyfish in the water trying to stay clear of those things. But someone came through and said they didn't sting. And I was taking their word for it. And I was going through, and I never did get stung by any of them. But a friend of mine that went with me, he did. One got on his mat and got him underneath his arm and on his arm here. But but hmm, hour or two, they were out of there. They were gone. 
So enjoyed it there. We stayed there for about eight hours. Then we set sail and went to Nassau. Had a great time there. <laughs> Talked with a few of the locals. I love going to places and seeing how people, how they live their lives. It, I enjoy that. So I talked to a few of the locals and it was very interesting. Went to the straw market there, enjoyed that, uh, got a few things, and made a day of Nassau. And then we set sail, set sail back onto the open waters, headed back to Jacksonville. This is a mug. It's not a mug. What am I talking about? Shot glass. The fascination with got the ship on it. It's like yay, 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 yay. Okay, Kenneth, get your act together. Chiching, bada bing. But it's a shot glass with carnival fascination on it. And as you can see there, two comp shelves. Also. I got this from my mother. I love white knights. Anything like this, I really like. I got this. Uh, I take that to be some kind of... It's like a jellyfish. But that's what it is in this paperweight. Love it. And my dog Odie is about to go crazy over there. wanting to get outside and chase squirrels. Got me another owl. <laughs> and I said, I got another kitty. Randall, a friend of mine, says, I don't think that's a kitty. That's an owl. And it's like, I think you're right. It's just like, oh well. I liked it. Love the color. So that's two of the things that I got there among a lot of shirts. Different other things, but that's what I have standing right here close by so we were on the open waters coming back going down it was not bad at all and excuse me I have, my eye is burning I have to bear with me uh, going down the sailing was very smooth uh, coming back there was a change in the water temperature. The water was more dense, and it, the ship was a little shaky. But I did great. It was the first time I've ever been to where I could not see lambs, but I did good. The first two days, I took some motion meds and did good, knocked it right out, had my feet under me in no time, and was good to go. Coming back, the water got a little choppy, and you could really tell it, but I did fine, so I thank God, you know, that we we had a safe trip there and back. So we can review that was it. Uh, hopefully, I will put some pictures at the end of this podcast, and so that you can enjoy. Hope you will enjoy. Let's talk about podcasts of the week. I come back was trying to catch up last night on some of the podcast, and. I left out a day, I think, before Rhinebeck started. Next year will not be a cruise, but I am so planning on going to Rhinebeck next year. So I was watching Knit One Heart 2 podcast with Wendy and Sheila. Love their podcast, by the way. And that would be, I think what I'm going to start doing on my podcast every week is that I'm going to profile a podcast of the week that I have really enjoyed because you know I, I don't watch television I, I watch podcasts I'm a YouTube junkie I love watching knitting podcasts and seeing what other people's doing enjoyed their podcast and seeing what they had gotten at Ryan Beck just made me really want to go even more another podcast uh Knitting in Circles, who I dearly love, Darren and Amy. They have a magnificent podcast. And they went to Rhinebeck and showed some of their enhancements that they got while they were there. And also has some pictures of the area. And 
the animals. And there's not a lot of that here that I can find yet. And I'm in South Alabama. If you know of any yarn festivals that's close by this area, shoot me a word. Let me know. Love to go. I think there's one in February in Montgomery that I'm going to. I haven't really done a lot of research on it yet. So if you know of anything, shoot me a line. I would love to go. But I'll definitely be going to Rhinebeck next year. Making plans as of now. Uh, another podcast that I thumbs up is The Knit Girls. They're one of the first podcasts I really started watching. The Knit Girls with Leslie and Laura. Love their podcast and like really they had a question and Q and A kind of format this past time and I really like that. So hey, got a question? Shoot it over. I'll answer it on podcast. That, that would be a dip, something good to throw into the podcast every week. Question and answer time. So hey, we'll see how it goes. Got a question? Throw it out there. Give it a shot anyway. How about that? So another one that I'm going to place at the top, and I'll explain why even more so at the end of this podcast, but she is doing something that I really like, and that's uh, Nicolos World with Nicole O'Shaughnessy. She does a great podcast, and she's doing a special with men in the fiber arts. And I said, you know what, that's very interesting because I'm having a hard time finding the guys out there that's really doing podcasts. I've done searches in it. I don't know if I'm not putting the keywords in there or what. But there's a few that I'm coming across and a lot of guys uh, on Ravelry that I'm finding. So hats off to that. But I'm really looking for the, the male knitter that's podcasting. So she's doing a special there, and it was very interesting. And so that she's going to be doing podcasts, a special that's going to highlight a male knitter or a male crocheter, a male that's in the fiber arts. My hat's off to you, Nicole. Thank you for what you're doing. Greatly appreciated from this male knitter. You know, I've never been one to to stand up and say, I do this or I do that. I've never been one of the ones that felt like that I had to put it on a banner and shout it out to the world. And no, that's not me. I do what I do. I do what I like to do and what I love to do and enjoy. And if someone likes it, kudos. If you don't, well, then that's okay, too. But it's not like that I've got to convince the world that it's okay that men knits or men crochet or men does this or men does that. No, that's not me. One of the things that I'm also seeing is I see where there are books that's given to some of the podcasters to review from some of these publishing companies. And I've looked at some of them. And... There are some of them are very nice and they have great patterns and things that I would definitely love to knit. One of the key factors that I look at is that if I'm going to purchase something as a mill knitter, because I do knit for myself and I knit for other guys. But if you're not going to put something in your article or in your book for a mill knitter, then this mill knitter is I kind of get turned off on that, and it's hard for me to buy a book for 20-some bucks if it's only one or two male patterns in there, and the rest of them are for ladies, and that's fine. I understand that. It's Things are published to the market. <coughs> Excuse me. And why I got off on that tangent, God only knows, but hey, I have looked at many, many books online I've looked at many many little ebooks of patterns and looking for things and there's very few things out there that's for men I'm not a designer I wish I could design patterns 
but that's just, that's not me. It's not my cup of tea. I will twerk things that I see that's out there. <laughs> if there's something in it that not to my taste, I may twerk it a little bit, but it's not my pattern. And I understand that. And I give a shout out to who does the pattern. All right. That's podcast of the week. Hope that I've got all that out there. All right. So kudos and hats off to Nicole O'Shaughnessy with Nicolo's World. And she's also on Ravelry. Her name on there is Nikki18229. Look her up. Subscribe to her. Join her on Ravelry. You will not be disappointed. Okay, Dave, what's on the needles? Absolutely nothing. I'm not knitting at the moment. I do have the sweater that I'm doing for my sister that is still on the needles that I have not even touched. As a matter of fact, they're in my bag stashed because I haven't had time to knit on them. Also with the scarf. That's two projects that uh, the sweater I will finish in... But before November the 28th, it will be finished. I'm doing it for my sister. And then the shawl that I'm doing for Randall's mother is going to be a Christmas present, so I've got plenty of time on it. So I haven't been pushed. There was a pair of socks that I had to get done. And yay, hands up, rock, rock, rock. They're done. So what's on the needles? I... I didn't even want to name the sweater and the shawl because they're put on hold for right now. Finished objects. I do have finished objects. I'm going to have to get up and step away from the computer. Be right back. One of my finished projects is this little guy, Jinx, who turned out great. Yay! It's a pattern on Ravelry. I think it's a fade for a pattern. But sure it is. By Susan Claudino. A well written pattern. I did this with sock yarn on a, I think a one, US one. And it's knit in parts. You do the ears separate, the arms. Check the guy's little tail out, would you? You do the face, this part separate. Ta da! And. I just absolutely love, 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 love the way Jinx turned out. Jinx is getting me into some of the Halloween knit alongs. So he will be showing up in some of their feeds. Very easy knit. The pattern is well written. And I'd say, knit this little guy up. Love it. And the only thing, <laughs> and it's not so noticeable, but this ear went on great. I sewed that thing on perfect. This ear over here made my little jinx very unique indeed he is because he is not sewn on at the same way this other one is what you're going to love if you knit jinx the way the arms are done kind of like a three needle bind off kind of thing love how these arms went on so I will be knitting several of these. Several, several, several. I will be tweaking the mouth though. He's done to kind of be like a, it's for Halloween. I'm going to make the mouth on the others a little bit more appeasing. That's not so Halloweenish, let me say. Alright, 
That's genes. Knit this little sucker up in no time. By Susan Claudino on Ravelry. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha. Socks. Yay. And they are both on the sock blockers. I haven't watched them yet. They really haven't been blocked. Just wanted to get them on here to show you. Lay that one down. And I have got to give a shout out to the socks therapist on Ravelry. I've been knitting socks for a while. And I've done about every kind of heel that is out there. This heel here, it's the Fish Lip Kiss Heel Sock. Just, and I, it's a pay, it, the pattern is like a dollar. But what you get for your dollar is so much more worth than just the dollar. It goes through the whole line of sizing and gauging your sock and how to really knit a sock to be the perfect fit. But not only is that pattern great for doing that, but it is the to me it is the most perfect heel and the easiest heel you will ever knit. And I've knit the the gussets, turn the heels, the short row heels where you pick up. I've done them all. This will always be my go-to heel. I'm not going to sit here and say that I will not do the others. For sure I will, because I knit socks for other people, and if that's the heel that they want, then I'll knit whatever. I'll put any heel in a sock for anyone that wants it. I've knit pretty much all of them. A close runner to this would be the Sweet Tomato Heel Sock by Cat Boardy. It's another wonderful sock. They fit great, but this is the easiest heel I think you will ever come across doing worth the dollar. Get it and try this heel and let me know just how much you like it. So with that being said, that's my two finished objects that I have. I think uh, one of the things that I'm going to do next is there is this, uh, let me see, I'm going to be doing a project for myself. Can you believe that next? I'm going to knit, uh, what is it called? Is it a shawl? Maybe not a shawl. Let me put this up. It is called the Strict Mitch. Ekin Strict Mitch. It's a long triangular scarf. Just perfect to keep one's neck warm. And ta da bam. That's, you can see it there. Yeah. Okay. It's a pattern that I got off of Ravelry. It's by Martina Ben. So that's going to be the next thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it with this yarn here, 100 grams. You can make it with 100 grams or 150 grams. You've got a small version or a big version. I'm going to do the small version with 100 grams of this lovely yarn here. Love that colorway. I've made a pair of socks before out of this yarn. And it's by Marks and Cat and Fane Trend uh, colorway. I have smashed through it. So I really don't. Party 666 or 66. This colorway, I'm not really for sure. But it is beautiful. That I do know. And I had to go out and buy a pair of scales to weigh this yarn out. And because you knit it in sections, you do like 
25 grams here, 25 grams there, 25 grams here, 25 grams there. So I had to have a pair of scales to get that knitted the way that it was supposed to be. One thing I did find out just playing with the scales is that all these yarns, when it says 50 grams, it's not always 50 grams. It says 100 grams. This is supposed to be 100 grams. It's not. It's 92 grams. Got this from my yarn shop and paid a pretty little penny. A skein of yarn that I got from Joanne's uh, Serenity. 50 gram ball, 50 grams on the dot. Another one was 65 grams, 65 grams on the dot. So, but I've gotten several yarns that is really not the way that they say it is. I don't know if that is common because I have always taken, if they it said it's 50 grams, I take it to be 50 grams. So, with that being said, where am I? I'm at 26 minutes. Before I get into the winning of the yarn giveaway, I can show you something, my two enhancements that I got, two yarn enhancements that I got a couple of weeks ago. I don't think I've shown these before. This is Wildfoot Luxury Yarn. It's 75% washable wool, 25% nylon. Color is Ragtime. I've got two of these. And 1075 a skein. This is some fantastic sock yarn. This is what this is. And these are from friends of mine. But this is some very soft, stretchy yarn that bounces back. Love that yarn. Definitely be knitting socks out of that yarn all the time. And I've never knit any from Opal. This is sweet and spicy. 75% uh, uh, something. 75.25 is probably pretty much. Well, if I can find it. Well, I think it's covered up. But anyway, 75.25 Opal Sweet and Spicy 100 gram ball sock yarn. And probably we'll be knitting up a pair of socks in this in no time. Oh, and it's so freaking soft. It's unreal. But that's two yarns. And as a matter of fact, after I do this, I will be going to my local yarn shop, the Pale Moon, getting a friend that I met on the cruise ship, the Fascination, will be casting on a pair of socks for her. Today, size 8 indeed, Mary Lee, your socks will be coming very soon. Now, time for the giveaway. And let me say this. I spent a lot of time this morning going through my subscribers on YouTube and my subscribers on Ravelry. Because there are some subscribers that I have on YouTube that did not join my Ravelry group. I've got some subscribers on my Ravelry page that did not join or subscribe to my YouTube. To be eligible for this, you had to be on both to win. This is a nice giveaway. It's the yarns very nice. I think you will be pleased to get this. So I went through, had to cross out names there were some names that I had to put in twice for the drawing. I've got Randall, my roommate, to do the drawing for me. The number, 
I wrote all the numbers down. This is not his cup of tea. He doesn't know A from Z who's on whichever. I told him to throw me a number out there, and 13 was the lucky number after I went through and got all the names. So, bing, bong, the lucky winner is Nicole O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> There's me being funny. But <clears throat> Nicolo's World on YouTube. Her name on Ravelry is N I C K I 18229. Look her up. She's doing great things on her channels. You will enjoy listening to her and seeing her creations. So, Nicole, you are the lucky winner of this. Ah. Oh. Let me tell you, wonderful. Pure alpaca. You're going to love this yarn. It is beautiful. This right here. 100% superwash wool, 480 yards, Mahara sock yarn. If this will do the color, oh, they're spinning it up pretty good. Great, great, great. You've got the two little bamboo. The bamboo crochet little needles. I'll tell you what I use these for. When I swatch for a sweater, if I swatch for anything, I like to put these in my stitches and then measure from there. It gives me a base point. Another thing these little suckers are good for, picking up dropped stitches. And with my Addy Clicks, when I started knitting on those, with it being so slick, because I, I knit for the longest. I wouldn't knit on anything but bamboo because it grabbed my stitches, but I wanted to get faster. And when I did, I would drop the hell out of stitches. These little suckers right here are the bomb for picking them up. You'll love these. Hope you enjoy these. So another thing that is coming your way in this package, Nicole, is a bag that is made by yours truly. Okay. You're very creative, Nicole. I have watched you on YouTube. I had a hard time coming up with waiting to do straps on this bag. I did it one way, didn't like it, and redone it and re-sewed it here. I put buttonholes here that were cording can be run through and it's cinched. I didn't put the cording on there. I even went to Joann's and bought some eyes to put on here. Some metal eyes like grommets. I says, nope, I'm sending it as is. It is a finished project. You can use as is. You can put ribbon in there and tie that sucker up and it's good to go. I love the bag. As a matter of fact, I have one that I'm using right now just like this. It's lined. I think it looks very finished on the inside. But this is just something that I've done. I hope you enjoyed it. So, this will be coming to your way, Nicole. And I really hope you enjoy the yarns. And if you do a project with these, which I'm sure you will love to see, especially with this right here. As a matter of fact, I'm going back to the yarn shop today and getting me some of this. So, Nicole, I will be looking to hear from you. And congratulations on your win. Okay. I am just about 
at 35 minutes on this, I'm going to close this podcast off by talking about two giveaways that I think I'm going to do some kind of giveaway, whether it's small or big, every month. Uh, If it's nothing but gifting a pattern, and you say, why are you doing it every month? That's just a little far-fetched, a little just too much. I don't think so. I live under this uh, thought, and, and I'll tell you why, without getting into any of my personal background. I come up in this life really appreciating and learning to appreciate what I have and what I didn't have. So if I have, I have no problem giving. And I learned early on in life, and I am a firm believer that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that's the way I live my life. I'm always giving. I'm always giving of my time. I give of things, and that's my life. And in return, it would take me from here to the end of eternity to tell you the things that I've received back. And so that is a blessing that's on me. So with that being said, in the month of November, the November giveaway is going to be I don't know what it's going to be yet. I'm going to the yarn shop today and we'll be looking around things. Uh, But it may not even be yarn. I'm thinking about doing anywhere from a $50 to $100 gift certificate. And more or less leaning toward a $100 gift certificate from a yarn shop of your choice. It can even be in your area. All you have to do is give me their number, their phone. I'll call them. We can do it a transaction. That way they've got a YouTube, uh, not YouTube, a, a website. However you want to do it. Uh, but I'm thinking very ser- seriously of doing a $100 gift certificate. But this is going to cost you to do cause you to do some research and I'm wanting to knit a sweater for myself and I've looked at a lot of patterns I've looked at patterns to where I'm sick of looking at patterns I'll tell you what I like I love color work love love color work so this is probably what I'm going to do and it's just in the thought process right now and I will be doing threads on this on my Ravelry group and on any of my giveaways from now here on out you will have to be on YouTube and Ravelry you will have to be on you you will have to be a subscriber to both especially for this one also but it's going to, it's just going to be a nice, I think a hundred dollar gift certificate is very nice. Um, I think <laughs> of your choice. But what I want you to do is to send me a pattern. And I'm not talking about a paid for a pattern or any kind. The pattern, if you send me a link to a pattern and I choose that pattern to do the sweater, and that be the, the pattern of my choice, then you're going to be the lucky winner. And it's just that simple. Um, but you only get to send one. If you can't send today, you say, okay, I found a pattern today. I'm going to send it to you. Then tomorrow you find another one and you says, okay, I'm going to send it. No, you can't do that. So if you want to, you can do some research for me and choose the best of your liking and send it to me. And if I choose that, then you're going to be the lucky winner. Because I love a color work. Uh, the sweaters that I've seen, a lot of sweaters with a lot of color work up through here. Love it. Uh, I'm not one that's really, 
looking for from top to bottom to be all color work. No. I'm not saying that I would not pick one of that choosing, but it would really have to click something off in my head. That's going to be my November giveaway, and it will probably be next week. This will be narrowed down to all details because it's just coming right off the top of my head right now. But it's definitely going to be toward that line about having, a, if I choose a pattern, a link from a pattern, send me the picture of the pattern, of however, you know. But then I will do research through that pattern. And that's going to be the November giveaway. Details will be worked out. Come back to you with it next week. I already know what I'm going to do for the December giveaway. In one of my earlier podcasts, you saw one of the dolls that I do. The clothing. I do a hat, a sweater, and a blanket, socks for a doll. And I, I give them away to... Children that are, that's just not blessed the way some children are. And I I do those and I just give them away at random. So I'm going to give one of these dolls away for the month of December. And that's going to be my November and December giveaways. And details on those will be forthcoming. So I think I have spoke quite a bit. And I hope that everyone has had a blessed day and will continue to have a blessed day. And once again, accept my apologies for being late in getting the giveaway out. Uh, I am usually a lot more prompt than that, but due to unforeseen things that come up, I just could not get to it. So it had to wait. All right. Always knit something for yourself and enjoy what you're doing. But above that, please, please, always remember those that are out there that are not as fortunate as yourself. Knit something for them or pass something along for them to knit, however you want to do it. And trust me, you'll be blessed there. So, Enjoy the pictures that are coming up if I can get them out. And if I cannot get the pictures to upload on here, then just ignore this part of the video also. So with that being said, peace, goodbye everyone, and continue to be blessed.